lovely to see you all. Our first announcement, save the date, 28th of March. It's, we're going to have a congregational meeting and then we're going to have lunch. I'm not sure what's on the menu yet, but I'm sure it will be delicious. Our Soul Survivor 2021 conference, the tickets are sold out. So you have to wait until further notice. Yesterday, Sunjay took some of our lovely girls on a bus trip and they went to La Perouse. I think there's a slide. I'll get out of the road so you can see. And the next bus trip, and put it in your diaries, is the 17th of April. KCO for 2021 is the 20th to the 21st of March. And next Sunday, our sermon series is part two. And this morning we're going to have communion. And Sunjay will fill you in on that one. We're going to have the acknowledgement for the First Peoples. We acknowledge this land that God has created and blessed. We pay our respects to the Wallamagetal people of the Eora Nation, the first inhabitants of this place. We honour their custodianship of the land on which we gather today and its surrounding waters and offer our respect to their elders, past, present and emerging. Good morning to you all. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Borneo Park Uniting Church Sunday morning worship service. So are we still having big waving hands to each other? Welcome all, family, <coughs> friends, and our young ones, young at hearts. Thank you all for coming and joining us this morning. The call to worship. Save me, O oh God. For the waters have come up to my neck. I have come into deep waters and the flood sweeps over me. O oh God, you know my folly. The wrongs I have done are not hidden from you. Do not let those who hope in you be put to shame because of me, O oh Lord God of hosts. Do not let those who seek you be dishonoured because of me, O God of Israel. It is zeal for your house that has consumed me. The insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord, and at an acceptable time, O God. In the abundance of your steadfast love, answer me. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Let us come before the presence of God, who is always there for us with mercy and gives us hope to endure our faith forever. Please come, come. Let us worship God. Let's sing the first hymns together, God So Loved. I would like to invite Isabella and Bianca for the song. Whosoever 
It's always good to sing, to praise God, His glorious name, though we can't sing together. But thank you, Isabella and Bianca, for your beautiful gifts in praising God and worshiping God together. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear loving Father, we, we always thank you for our young ones, especially our young people of our congregation. They are every day, every single day, increasing your kingdom in their life, at home, at school, classroom, and wherever they are, even in church on Sunday. As they increase your kingdom, Lord God, please receive all honor and glory from their hearts, no matter how it looks like, like a little tiny mustard seed in their faith, in their life. But we will see the fruits. They will bear your fruit to glorify your name among other people, other nations, and continue to be faithful as your people, child of God, giving your words and your acts towards the world in their entire life. And also we pray for their parents, their mom and dad, grandmother, grandfather, and also teachers and who are always guiding them in their in their life, life stage. Lord God, please pour out your Holy Spirit, your wisdom and understanding, and especially the faithfulness to, to them as they uh, take the journey with the young people together. We know there are many challenges. There are many things that always, you know, um, turning us back to our, our past wrongdoings. But you are only God and you love us so that you sent your son Jesus Christ for us to lead us, to guide us as we go, as we live the life given by the grace and love and mercy of your son, son Jesus Christ. Lord God, please uh, continue to be with our young people at church and Sunday school and wherever they are, they always be um, be with you and be with your uh, the powerful presence always. We pray this and also special blessings upon um, Lenny and Margaret as they look after our young ones at Sunday school. Thank you God. We pray in Jesus name. Amen. Oh, wasn't, wasn't it too long? <laughs> okay, go and please come back when we will have communion service. Okay. Olivia, go. Let us continue worship God in this prayer of the day. So responses are on, on both font on screen. So you may join when we say that part together. Let us pray. Loving God, we come to you in worship and thanksgiving you are greater than we can understand open our eyes that we may see the wonderful truth you have shown to us in Jesus you are more loving than our hearts can respond to help us to give ourselves to you in worship so that we learn what you want us to be you are wiser than we can know Still, your minds are as we worship you, so that we can understand the things you are saying to us. Loving God, in Jesus, you chose to come to the world in humility. You chose the path the world saw as foolish. You used what the world considered weak, we worship and adore you. Amen. For the Bible reading, I'm inviting Su uh, Young Lim for us to lead this Bible reading. Today's Bible reading is from John chapter 2, verse 13 to 22. Uh, I will be reading this in Korean. <laughs> Jerusalem 성전에 올라가신 유대인의 6월절이 다가오자 예수님은 예루살렘으로 올라가셨다. 
예수님은 성전 안에 소와 양과 비둘기 파는 장사꾼들과 돈 바꿔주는 사람들이 앉아있는 것을 보시고 노꾼으로 채찍을 만들어 양과 소를 모두 성전에서 몰아내시고 돈 바꿔주는 사람들의 돈을 쏟아버리시며 그들의 상을 둘러엎으셨다. 그러고서 비둘기 파는 사람들에게 이것들을 당장 치우고 앞으로는 내 아버지의 집을 장사하는 집으로 만들지 말아라 하고 말씀하셨다. 그러자 제자들은 주의 성전을 위하는 열심히 내 속에서 불타오릅니다. 라고 쓰인 성경 말씀이 생각났다. 그때 유대인들이 나서서 예수님께 당신은 무슨 권리로 이런 일을 하시오. 그만한 권리를 가졌다면 이것을 입증할 만한 기적을 우리에게 보여주시오. 하였다. 그래서 예수님은 그들에게 이 성전을 헐어라. 내가 3일 안에 다시 세우겠다. 하고 대답하셨다. 그러자 그들은 46년이나 걸려 이 성전을 지었는데 당신이 3일 안에 세우겠다는 말이요? 하고 따져 물었다. 그러나 예수님이 말씀하신 성전은 자신의 몸을 가리키신 것이었다. 제자들은 예수님이 죽으셨다가 부활하신 후에야 이 말씀을 기억하고 성경과 예수님이 하신 말씀을 믿게 되었다. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Susan, this is the time that, that we prepared. So our uh, dear my friend, um, and also dear my friend Susan, and I... And Susan discussed about uh, planning um, to prepare time to pray for um, Susan's uh, beloved husband, Kirill Bozinowski, who, who died um, the 23rd of February last year. So during the lockdown period and pandemic, we were not able to uh, mourn with her in person. So the funeral service just was held in a local um, the funeral director, director and there so just her, her sons came and joined. Yeah, only one son, two sons are they living in America, but only one son was able to join uh, Susan to mom and missing their father and husband. I was aware of that, but I also wasn't able to go with Susan to join the funeral service. I just, I was holding her in my prayer and asking other elders to pray together. So this time, so as Susan and I, we uh, agreed and discussed a, a, a very brief time to pray for uh, Susan and the late uh, Kirill Bozinowski, whom was loved and cared by Susan for a long time. So our dear friend Susan Bozinowski, um, you had your beloved husband and lifetime friend, late Kirill Bozinowski, who passed away on 23rd of February last year. So we now call each other, call, call upon each other to pray together for Kirill who are now with his Heavenly Father. So I'm going to read a short poem, then we, we pray. He was a handsome man, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. <laughs> so was I. Yes, 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 of course. The beautiful young lady. The title is In Memory. Those we love Remain with us, for love itself lives on. Cherished memories never fade, because a loved one is gone. Those we love can never be more than a thought apart. For as long as there is a memory, they will live on in our hearts. So let us pray. O Lord, the God of mercies, grant upon the souls of thy servants 
the anniversary day of whose passing we are keeping, a place of solace, of peaceful rest, of glorious light. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And also I will say on behalf of congregation, special thanks for your support, your uh, your visible or you know your secret support on Susan when she was struggling after Kirill's passing. So at that time we were not able to gather, but fortunately we have a number of morning tea times where she could come and we we in person gather together and exchange our word of comfort and love for her and to each other. And I thank you all for your supporting on Susan and each other. Thank you. So let us pray. So before I begin my sermon sharing, your responses are on the screen too. O gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you, ears to listen for your word, a heart to love you, and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This week, this coming week, will be a big week for my life, or someone's life. Wednesday, 10th of March, I, with my dearest loving lifetime partner and wife, <laughs> Grace, and I will celebrate our 20th anniversary of our married life. It's a big O. So, <laughs> and also the month of March this year, it is our 20th year to live in Australia as Korean migrants. So we, married, we got married on the 10th of March and then 20th, 28th of March we arrived at the Kingsport Smith Air, Air, Airport. So March is a big month for, for us, especially our history here at Australia and also as a married couple. Very significant month for us, time for us. So actually on that our wedding day, we bowed in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit to commit each other as husband and wife. So great grace she turned and I also turned from our individual life and also and get together towards one and sacred life in marriage. However, however, nearly 20 years in marriage, we are still turning from our own personality towards togetherness in lawful and also faithful married life. We have had many times to argue, <laughs> saying in gentle manner, and scratch each other's hearts and emotions many times, and put self in silence when a better single word might take us to a better and peaceful situation. But we sometimes, and mainly me, you know, I'm the person you know, when, when facing you know, struggles. So 20 years in battle and settlement for this married life. In there, I have gained three things how to keep our marriage holy and sacred, lovely and joyful and vivid and alive. I'm not saying that I gained this principle when I got just married 20 years ago, but you know, still I am gaining and try to practice this in my daily life, whether she has noticed or not. <laughs> I learned that I need to say honestly all the time, no telling lies, though it would make a situation better instantly telling truth and facts. I know it's hard, 
but I try to say honestly without any my my personal my emotional interpretation on it just say what it is exactly what it is sometimes saying without honesty cause more trouble so you may experience that you know, lost the point that we began to argue and then we went wrong way and keep fighting or sort of keep arguing or scratching each other's emotions and hearts so telling uh, saying honestly is important then then i learned that i need to say differently in terms of choosing better words to deliver what i might feel and using better tones to touch each other each other's hearts in this uh, the conversation and I, I learned that i need to say faithfully because simply i am we are christian the words from my mouth and acts done by my body tell who i am who we are so i am christian who follows and lives the life given by our lord jesus christ and my god so as I am getting older, and I believe I'm getting wiser, so I can practice those three ways to say in my daily life. And if there might be an issue or problem, no matter who causes it. So say honestly, and say differently, and say faithfully. I don't know whether Grace has noticed my way to say recently. I do know the three ways to say has significant importance in my daily life. If you nodding, if you are nodding with me, you may understand you are also agreeing with me. This principle leads me and this principle forms me today and this tells who I am in Jesus Christ, my Lord and my God. In today's Bible reading, Jesus clears the temple court. In other words, Jesus replaces the temple from market, marketplace to house of prayer, from place of exchange to place of worship, from the center of all material power to the soul and heart of all the humble and marginalized people. In Jesus' cleansing of the temple, and related actions like driving out all animals and money exchanges and also turning over their tables, there were maybe and many witnesses who might have a mixed emotions of delight or pathos. So imagine that animals cried and ran away out of control and money changes knelt collecting coins and yelling and scream at Jesus. Who are from all and also there are many people many all sorts of people who are from all different places cultures and classes of society wondered what's going on here they might have joy agony or curiosity who is this man and what authority he has to do so in the temple courts if this is an episode of a drama, many people might have multiple layers of emotions, feelings and action and reaction. So I ask you, what are you feeling when you hear the story of Jesus replacing of the temple upside down and inside out? And what role would you play in this drama? And how would you express your emotion towards the audience and how to say about what was happening in these temple courts. According to the words and the acts of Jesus, he visits and liberates the marginal people like Samaritans and the man who was born blind, Lazarus and so on. And also in the communities where uh, its members read and heard John's gospel. There were ethnic relations with Palestine, Jews, diaspora, non-Jewish group, and its subgroups who could experience being marginalized by mainstream religious order 
and the Roman authorities. They both have waited for help from others or Messiah to rescue them, leading them, leading them towards a better place to be, a better life to live. Then they were liberated, liberated from the darkness by Jesus himself and the message from the gospel. And in him and through him, they might have the presence of God anew. In today's passage, the image of Jesus as liberator and humble king is found rather as a rule breaker or partisan attacking this situation and the authorities. What he did, what he does is not violent, but just. And the image here is overlapped with king of humility and the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In cleansing and replacing of the temple courts, Jesus does not make the crowd or the hearers of the gospel run for their weapons against all power and authorities, but rather makes them wonder how they would better bring their hearts in the house of God or how they would better say who God is for them in their life, which was oppressed by the empire and other authorities. Jesus says what it exactly is, the temple and God and what they need to believe honestly. In, cleansing, in clearing of the temple courts, Jesus might have called upon us to turn back to God and say about what we should be and do in Him honestly, differently, and faithfully. A call to turn away from where we struggle and back to where we should be, the love of God and the Almighty God who forms and transforms many lives. This call is not the short-term option of easing our problems, but the eternal perspective of peace and hope within each and all of us. This, this passage and message are not at all about ending with catharsis. This passage is all about who Jesus Christ is for us and for many. He brings a new era in the middle of the temple courts, talking about a new way of living, a new lifestyle in God honestly. So this model has its vivid description in verse 16. It describes, get this out of here, stop turning my father's house into a market. Beyond the cleansing of all unjust and earthly things, Jesus moves forward to call people to turn back to God, straightforwardly saying, This is my Father's house. This simple statement, This is my Father's house, where He belongs and His people do too. He proclaims that the temple is for God and for the people of God to meet with each other in prayers and offerings, reminding them that they should turn from the past regrets and wrongdoings and towards the God of presence in relationship anew. This is my Father's house. This simple statement tells them about where they should be and what they should do in the presence of God and also in the community of his people. Then the Jews ask about Jesus' authority to do so. What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? The challenging question might come from a variety of people that Jesus met. The Jewish leaders, the marginal people in society, Non-Jewish people such as Samaritans, Greeks and Romans, male and female, the rich and the poor, the healthy and the sick, officials and ordinary people, and, and the center and the margins. All sorts of people might challenge Jesus who cleanses and replaces the temple. 
in their challenging question about sign or authority, earthly and imperial power are mocking Jesus' heavenly sovereignty as the Son of God. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple because they see the temple as a building of material. material. And raising it in three days means for Jesus that the temple is the body of Jesus Christ himself. Godly, heavenly, and a holy and sacred place where God dwells in with his people. Jesus says differently that the temple is not a building, but himself, the Son of God, who is sent by God the Father to visit, liberate, and give life everlasting. And the last verse seems to be added after Jesus rose again from the grave and turned up before the disciples. John and his communities recalled what he had said in the temple court after he was raised from the dead. John says they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus has spoken. After Jesus' resurrection, the believers and disciples confessed that the temple is the Father's house where all can meet with each other to pray and give offering. And after the resurrection, they were able to say faithfully that the temple is the body of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So this gives us a hope that we continue living faithfully till the end of this life journey. So in that journey, we do our best to say honestly, differently and faithfully about what we believe to our world, to the world. But I say again, it's not easy. As I shared you my memories and recollection of my married life, it's taken 20 years, but maybe another 20 years to, to say exactly, honestly, differently and faithfully. But I, I committed to go and finish this, this commitment in my life. So dear my brothers and sisters in Christ, so this Lenten season, I would encourage all of us to say honestly, differently, faithfully. When you speak, when you say, when you have a say to, to other people, or say to your, your, yourself, your words of faithfulness may touch others' lives and make them turn back to God who always wait for his people. And would you believe that the word of your mouth can change someone's life? So please say honestly, differently, and faithfully if you are able. And also show this to your children and their children, saying honestly, differently, and faithfully. The word of, from your mouth will change yourself, your family, and the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to gather together, whether it be in body or spirit. Thank you for blessing us with this wonderful community of people, for the support and love that they give us. We pray for the health and safety of all our congregation members and their friends and family. Nourish our minds, bodies and spirits so we are able to do all that we need to this week ahead. Thank you for being our strength and our guide through all the challenges that we face in our lives. We pray for Ireland and the countries within the United Kingdom, England, North Ireland, Scotland and Wales. Please bless the leaders of these countries and give them the wisdom that they need to make good decisions for their people. Guide the people of these countries through the COVID pandemic and bless their healthcare workers to say, stay safe and strong physically and mentally through these challenging times. 
We pray for the young people of our congregation as they grow and learn more over the course of this year. In the upcoming weeks, many of our young people will be camping. We pray that this time spent together will strengthen their relationships with each other and with you, God. We are so blessed to have access to the education that we do in this country, for the resources and teachers that many of the students in Australia have. We pray that one day everyone will have access to good education, that they will get to grow and develop through learning. We pray for the teachers across the world. Please bless them as they have one of the most important jobs to teach and shape the minds of the next generation. We would like to pray for all people who are in a stage of change in their lives, whether this be a change of school, university or job, a change of lifestyle, a change of countries, for those who are starting a new chapter of their lives after the loss of a loved one or the gain of a new one. Surround them with your love and guidance. Remind us that these periods of change are what shape us and that you will always be with us during these times. Heavenly Father, remind us of the wonder of our lives on earth. We pray for our relationships with you, with others and with ourselves. Help us to find the people in our lives that balance us and lift us up, not drag us down. We know that you teach us about true and faithful love. Please help us apply this to our own lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Isabella. We continue our worship in the sharing of the sacraments of Holy Communion. So I welcome you all to join this communion fellowship. As we gather here today in the sight of God to join in the service of communion, we come before the table set by the people of Borneo Park Uniting Church. Special thanks to Marilyn and Mr. Susan to prepare this table. Thank you very much. And the God of all creation is not bound to the bounds of time or place, any time, anywhere. God transcends our physical beings and human-made history and parts all the hindrances and limitations between us so that we may be together in this mystical and liminal space called communion. Through God and the mystery of Holy Communion, we become one creation, one body, one church. Join with us and each other now in acknowledging our togetherness in the presence of God. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. Guys, please come and join our communion. Thank you. Invitation to this table. We remember the time when Jesus faced difficult decisions and destructive forces. Facing his winter, which means his time being placed in deeper agony and sorrow. The days and nights of his searching in facing failure, in facing death. When we experience the winter of our lives too, we may find the courage to let go and trust in your guiding, warming lights. And we remember Jesus has shown us that life is stronger than death. His love is stronger than our fear. And as we share the bread and wine together, we remember the words and the actions of that ancient meal. Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his friends. And he poured a cup of wine, offered thanks for it, and shared it also with his friends. Ancient symbols, common acts. Thanks be to God. God is with us. It is good to be joyful as we give thanks to you, Holy God. You created us in your image and gave us life with your breath. Your love does not fade even as we run away from that love. 
You liberated us from our bondages in daily life and continue to ease our burden through all our lives. Your Spirit makes us one with Christ and one with each other. It binds, blends, and multiplies us as we leave the good news of Jesus Christ to the world as one beloved community of faith, singing your praises on earth and in heaven until Christ comes again and we feast at the divine table in perfect harmony. We say this together. O honor and glory are yours, God, now and forever. Amen. So as we are gathered in the presence of God, joining this communion, so we say this prayer together, the prayer that Lord Jesus Christ taught us. You may say this prayer in a language of your hearts. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This bread is made from many grains from many fields, yet was formed into a single loaf. Because there is one God, we though many, and in many places are one holy. Join us as we partake in the body of Christ in remembrance of him. The body of Christ given for you, and we give thanks to those who have brought this bread on this table. This fruit of the vine is made by many hands from many places, yet pours freely. Join us as we share in this blessing of the cup of the new covenant. The cup of blessing poured out for you and for all, and we may bless those who have prepared and set this chalice up on this table fellowship. So while we are sharing the communion, you may listen to this music. And also, uh, we, the elders and I, we go and serve you as you are seated. Let us pray. Eternal God, thank you for this mystery of faith and both human and divine mercy where you have given yourself to us. May we go into the world during this Lent, strengthened by your Spirit, in a spirit of generosity. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Offering is made by your um, 
retiring offering when you if you prepared your offering today when you go out put your envelope or money on the plates prepared at the back and money will be wisely and faithfully used for the mission and ministry of this congregation it's a benediction the creator god as we return now to our homes workplaces and communities may your spirit open our eyes anew to the vastness and splendor of your beauty all around us may we hear and smell and see and touch your glory evident in all of your creation above all let us see your beauty even in the brokenness of our brothers and sisters all of them created in your image and waiting to experience that redemption that comes only through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we go now to love and serve our Lord. Amen. Everybody. It's lovely to be with you. I haven't been here for the last couple of weeks, but it's great to be back. Um, the reason I just want to have a quick word with you is that Robin rang me this morning and I wasn't here at the beginning of the service just to um, pass on what she wanted me to say. And that is that we're hoping that as many people as possible can join us on uh, Sunday the 28th for the, um, uh, the service as well as for the congregational meeting, which will be very, very interesting, and also the welcome back lunch. Now this is just about the lunch. Uh, we will be asking you in the uh, next little while whether you're coming uh, to join us because we need to know for catering purposes exactly how many people will be with us, or more or less, uh, because, um, because of COVID, um, we can't prepare meals or dishes at home and bring them along to church. We have to organise to have things that have been pre-made by... Um, caterers or you know whatever um, we may be able to make salads here under strict guidelines and supervision robin said but basically we'll need to organize the catering so that will take a little bit more time so um, i could ask you if you put your hands up now whether you think that you'll be coming but i'm not going to do that we'll do that perhaps next week or your elders will email you and ask you just to respond and let them know so we'll be asking you in the next couple of weeks that was, I just want to make sure that I honoured Robin's phone call and um, let you know how things were being organised. Thank you to Sunjay and everybody that was involved in the service today and our beautiful congregation. It was a lovely, lovely service. Thank you. So now there's morning tea. Uh, no, thank you. Thank you, Sunjay.